Hey everyone! This week I had a question from Josh, uh, who's actually an alumni of our retreat. So hi Josh, thank you so much for your question. Um, and it was in response to a video that I did a couple of weeks ago around never having to ask the CFO for money again. And Josh's question went something like, how do we get the CFO to stop asking us to take 7% off year on year? <laughs> uh, so talking about the annual budgeting cycle and the, you know, the annual productivity improvement request that comes through that says, cool, whatever you did last year, we need you to cut the cost of what you're doing by 7% or whatever the number is. And um, I replied back to Josh and I said, essay long answer in response is required. Um, but I've got an offer for all of you that are watching straight up. So I'd be really keen to pull together a group of people who want to have that conversation about the strategies that we use. And so if you're interested, please hit me up, comment, message, email, whatever it is, get in touch. I'm looking to put that group together inside the next two weeks to have a conversation. Um, total freebie, just getting a bunch of like-minded people in a room and let's brainstorm through that. And so today what I thought I'd do is I'd get the ball rolling by giving you my top three things that I do when I go into organizations to try and uh, target that conversation with the CFO, to try and target that conversation about we need to keep taking 7% off year on year to be more productive. Um, and, and so the three ways that I do that uh, are, are pretty straight up. So the, the first thing is I often tackle it as a productivity problem because that's how I usually understand what it is that's being asked of us. If somebody's saying to you, I want you to do the work that you need to do this year but for 7% less, less money, and by the way, we want you to bring in more revenue, that's a conversation about doing more with less. It's a productivity conversation. And so that's usually the first place that I go is actually tackle that issue head on. So productivity to me is not only about doing things better every year. It's also about doing better things. And so the, the head on strategy that I will take is to start those conversations about what's important to our customers. What are they actually asking of us? What do they expect of us? How do we add value? And so you take that productivity conversation to the next level. So acknowledging that there might be an ask to do it for less cash, but equally opening up that conversation that says, hey, it's not just about doing things better, it's actually also about doing better things. And what do better things look like? And then building that community around, yep, better things look like this. So that's my first strategy. Um, my second strategy that I use is what I would call uh, bring holism to an organization. So often that conversation about take 7% off year on year is also attached to a functional siloed business unit. It's, and if you're not looking end to end, if you're not looking with a holistic perspective, really quickly that budgeting and that cost performance conversation turns into whack-a-mole. Because I can screw down my costs over here in my business unit for my thing, but that potentially means that if you're not fixing root cause, the problem just pops up in somebody else's budget. And so then they're having to pay for it. So the cost hasn't disappeared, it's simply moved. And that's that feeling of whack-a-mole where you just you you kind of you get a hold of one and then it pops up somewhere else. So introducing conversations, tools and techniques that look at holistic views, end-to-end -end views. I'll talk about end-to-end -end from a customer's perspective. Introducing those conversations, really, really critical too. Um, the best example that I've got for you today is probably if we were to look at a bottom-up budgeting process that says operations have a chunk of money, finance have a bu bucket of money, the IT team have a bucket of money, We've got a, um, a product development team that have a bucket of money and each of those budgets need to, they need to perform better by reducing 7% on each of those things. If we make an improvement in um, IT, that might pop up a whole bunch of stuff in operations that we hadn't thought of. But because we're not looking holistically, we don't see that. If you were to flip that 90 degrees and say, well, what does it actually cost to deliver this particular product all the way through end-to-end -end for the customer? 
So that's the IT component, the operations component, the product development component, all those pieces together, the communications component. What does it look like to deliver that end-to-end -end for a customer? All of a sudden, you get into a slightly different conversation about finances because you're not trying to optimize within each of your silos. You're trying to optimize end-to-end. -end. So that's what I mean when I talk about a strategy that looks for holism in an organization. The third thing I do is actively build an architecture that's capable of frequent change. Uh, and what I mean by that is not only your IT systems, your legacy IT stack that's causing you no end of pain and costs a whole bunch of money and time to do stuff with, yes, that's one part of it. But when I use the word architecture, what I mean is something a bit bigger than just your IT stack. What I'm talking about is the architecture of your organization. That's your governance structures, your decision-making processes, the cultural norms that you have in your organization about the way that you do work, the way that you make decisions, um, what you think about customers, what you think about what your job is. That component of the architecture also needs to be capable of frequent change. Because if we're not careful, we can go and solve the IT problem so that we can do a bunch of stuff much more quickly. But it goes back to that first problem around if you're feeding trash in the top of the stack, you're just doing more trash more quickly. And if you're not building an architecture around the way that you make decisions and the culture of the organization to handle uncertainty and ambiguity, you're not building that capability in your people, then they're never going to keep up with the pace of change, no matter how great your IT stack is. So those are my top three strategies. I wanted to open the conversation today. Um, as, as you probably guessed, that none of them are silver bullets. None of these things are quick fixes. This is a, this is a long-term entrenched way that we've been managing organizations for years. And it will take a little bit of time to get through that. Uh, so none of these are going to be silver bullet strategies. You, you may find that you get some quick wins, which is awesome. But this is about a long-term systemic change in your approach. And those are my top three strategies. So productivity conversation. Turn it into a conversation not only about doing things better, but also about doing better things. Holistic views, end-to-end -end views. Try and start to bring together those holistic pictures so that you're no longer playing whack-a-mole. You're actually having a conversation about the greater outcome, the greater good for the organization as a combination of all of your efforts rather than individual efforts. And then third is the architecture that's capable of rapid frequent change. And that's both within your IT stack, but also in your leadership capability, your operational capability, the fact that your people are capable of understanding that they need to operate with greater levels of or greater tolerances for uncertainty and ambiguity. The people and the culture and the decision making and the structures stuff as well. Those are my top three. If you want to be a part of the conversation, please send me a message. I want to put together that group just to jump on a Zoom call and have a chat for an hour or two about it. Um, really, really keen to, uh, yeah, open the conversation. Those are my top three strategies. Send me a note, send me a comment, send me an email, um, and let's get that phone call organized and see what happens. Let's just bring together a group of people that are uh, interested in solving this problem and maybe sharing some of the strategies that you've got for dealing with these type of problems. Uh, so that's it from me today. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome day, and uh, we will see you again very soon. Have a great one.